So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the Bible. We're going to look at many examples of crystal stones, rocks, or uh, because rocks, stones, crystals, uh, same thing. Okay, we can use them interchangeably. Um, obviously, a crystal is a lot more prettier and shinier. Um, some of them are pink, clear. Some of them are just clear quartz. Then you have one of the crystals named in the Bible a lot, amethyst. There's that little bit of amethyst right here. And so, um, let's see how pretty that is. These natural shapes that it makes. Yeah, what a wonderful world, you know? God is good. And uh, I'm so happy to be able to share this information with you. Uh, it seems like it's been... Um, hidden, lost, uh, missing, um, definitely known in the past, uh, however, somehow forgotten for a time, maybe now is the time for it to be um, revealed, I I'm, I'm a rookie, I'm a amateur, I'm not a guru, master, I'm not, none of these things, I'm seeking to, to, to learn more and to study more um, and, and realize uh, that this study, hopefully, can open the door for uh, conversation to uh, learn about other things as well. All right, so enough said with all that. Chapter 2 of the Bible. Let's just go to Chapter 2 of the Bible. Just dig right into it. Um, you find some very, very interesting things when you get to Genesis Chapter 2. All right, so if you notice... At verse 11, Genesis 2 and 11, the name of the first is Pison. It's talking about rivers, okay? Um, <clears throat> that that is a which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. Okay, so in the land of Havilah, there's a river and there's gold. And then verse 12 says, and the gold of that land is good. It's like... That's that good, good, okay? Just just, just kind of note, note that out. And you have to ask yourself, what the hell is this here for? I mean, in chapter 2 of the Bible, I need to understand that Havilah's got some bomb-ass gold. You know, just note that, homeboy. And it's also got some bedlam and onyx stone. And it's one of those things you don't really think about, but upon the end of this um, study... Hopefully, it, it may, you know, maybe it makes a little more sense. Maybe it don't. Maybe it just makes things more confusing for you. However, I think of some conclusions we can kind of draw or, or at least wonder, at least want to know more about dig deeper, right? That's what we do when we dig in deeper. All right. So um, just interesting to note, chapter two of the Bible, uh, before the fall of man, before... Uh, it was right after God planted the, the, the fields of the earth and um, before, before things grow. He wanted to let, you know, man know, yo, it's gold and have a lot. And it's onyx, stone and bellum. And the gold is bomb. I don't know. I'm sure I'm, I'm going to leave the comments open so we can let people take cracks at, at some of these, these, uh, these things. Because... I know as a fundamentalist, you want to make it all make sense and be perfect so God is seen in good and positive light. Um, but there's verses in the Bible that tell you clearly that God does good and evil. And just bear with me here. Um, but, I mean, we've got to deal with all these verses in the Bible. You can't run from them just because it's scary. Um, so it says in Isaiah 45 and 7, in the King James Version, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I mean, there. if you recall, there is even a, uh, a spirit, a lying spirit that God sent uh, on the earth to people. Um, and that's located in, let me look it up. And that's in 1 Kings 22 and 22. And it says that uh, the King James Version, And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophet, all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail 
also go forth and do so. So God is the one who's saying go forth and do so. If you look at the, uh, of course, um, here we go. I'm going to bring up the NIV. Uh, by what means the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets. And he said, you will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord, go and do it. So there you have an NIV and King James version of the Bible. God telling, uh, if you look it up, it's a spirit. I'm not really going to dig too deep into it right now, that portion of it, because we got so much else, other stuff to dig into. Um, but um, you can reference that for your, your, your future uh, studies. Going back to stones, crystals, gold, metals in the Bible. Um, I just incorporate, we're just incorporating all these these things because um, it, they were there in esoteric schools. They understand the meaning of them and the purpose of them, but uh, we're taught that they're evil in Christianity. Or even if you're a fundamentalist, some type of fundamentalist Bible believer, uh, Hebrew, or um, in, in a lot of these circles, um, we're taught that. But you know. Who knows? Maybe your particular circle it doesn't apply. So just let if the shoe doesn't fit, then the shoe doesn't fit. But in general, uh, especially coming from a background of Christianity, um, I know that if you had talked to me about two years ago about some crystals, I would have told you about you know, get get thee behind me, Satan is what I would have told you. Okay. And anyway, let's move forward. All right, we're gonna recall that um, the connection between brimstone and sulfur and of course, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 19, um, God rains uh, brimstone and fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah as part of his judgment. Um, we're not going to delineate on that, but we're just going to mention it here. For, uh, maybe possibly in the future we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on it. Uh, the, of course, we want to mention as well uh, the huge um, uh, Tower of Babel was built um, with some type of man-made brick uh, okay so it's man-made brick and mortar that they use to make the tower of babel i uh, just want to point that out we're not going to just going to quickly mention it kind of go going through here um next thing we want to kind of mention uh there are several dedication stones in the bible okay let's go to genesis 28 and 22 uh genesis 28 all right genesis 28 and 22 uh again it's just touching on this dedication stone type of ideal and this, this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. Okay. Um, again, you'll see this something similar in 31 and 45. And that's going to get us to our next topic here in a second. Um, but 31 and 45 says, And Jacob took a soft stone and set it up for a pillar. Okay. I mean, we could definitely point to places in the Bible where that's we're not supposed to do that. Um, so it's kind of confusing, uh, especially when you're trying to make it all make sense. You know, why was Jacob doing this? Why did Joseph have a divination cup? I uh, don't know what to tell you. Uh, when you're trying to be, keep one in a fundamental, when you're trying to keep it in a fundamental light, it's very hard. And you kind of go cuckoo trying to do it. Um, but when you look at it like, okay, there's something deeper going on here. Not necessarily just the reading this face at face value because you can't even do the things especially in the Old Testament I'm not talking about that's why the, the New Testament was written but you can't even do none of the stuff in the Old Testament um, at all because uh, there's no temple and anyway alright I digressed let's, let's move on here so uh, and then again you'll see a dedication stone type deal in 35 and 14 and then we'll go to our next topic which I'm sure you probably have already thought of by now um, but let me read 35 and 14. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, and even a pillar of stone. He poured a drink offering there on it, and he poured oil there on it. And Jacob called the name of that place where he spoke with him Bethel. All right, so you can take a look at some of those references that we, we mentioned in the study. Uh, next, we're going to go into talking about Jacob's ladder uh, and discussing um, how that's related to the topic. So I'm not going to begin it now. We'll start it with the next portion, next uh, piece, and go from there.